Hi, and welcome along to the next in our series of videos on container security fundamentals. In our last video, we started looking at Linux capabilities and how they can be used to give small segments of Root's traditional all-powerful privileges to a Linux host to individual processes and files. We also looked a bit about how those are used in Docker containers. And at the end of the last video, we said that we would look at how to harden Docker containers and actually drop some of the capabilities that you've got in them to essentially improve the security of those containers. So what we're going to do today is look at how capabilities work in Docker and also look a little bit about some of the things we can do to harden them by dropping those capabilities. Let's dive straight in to an example and see how this works. So if we do, um, we have our Docker containers and we just start one up. Let's start a new one. Um, minus IT. This is just a container testing with all the tools that I need in it. So let's just start this up. If we run this command here, which is called am I contained, this essentially will tell us what capabilities we've been given by default in Docker. And we can see here, we've been given a set of capabilities, which is the default. We can see there's things like NetBind service and NetRaw, which we're going to talk about as we go through this video. But this is just essentially the defaults that Docker thought would make things work fairly easily. So the first thing you might be able to do when you're running Docker is drop all of those capabilities. So if you think about it, if you have an application which traditionally ran as an ordinary non-root user before you used containers, you might not need any capabilities at all. We can see how this works using Docker by just doing Docker on IT, and then we'll do cap drop, drop all. So we'll drop all the capabilities and we'll use the same image as we used last time. and start of the bash shell. So now we've got a container running with no capabilities. Um, and if we do am I contained, we can see indeed we have no capabilities. But I can still do things inside this container. I can still list files, I can still make directories. You know, I can do anything I would be able to do with the permissions of the user I'm running. I just can't do root level things like for example, binding services to low ports may pray be, or doing anything else which might require root privileges, something an ordinary user couldn't do. So this is one option and definitely one to explore if you're considering containerizing your applications, if you have existing applications, or you're running applications in containers and think maybe I could harden them down a bit. This one, however, probably does need some testing. You would need to actually run your application test suite and make sure you're not encountering any errors. However, there's a couple of areas where due to changes in the way that Linux works over the years, we actually have capabilities that are granted by default to every container that we can quite probably get rid of completely safely. There's two that I want to have a quick talk about. The first one is NetRaw. Now, NetRaw is used for sending raw packets uh, um, in a pro by getting a process to send raw packets. And it's, from a security standpoint, often seen as being a bit dangerous because it allows you to do things like packet spoofing attacks, where an attacker tries to create essentially fake traffic for a process for a host. So it's one that we often try and recommend that people should drop. Now, the reason it's given to a lot of containers by default is because they need it for ping. So ping traditionally uses this capability in order to send and receive ICMP traffic. However, it might not be the case that you need that anymore. And we can demonstrate this. So what we'll do is we will get a container and we'll drop NetRaw specifically. So just drop the NetRaw capability. And then what we'll do is we'll try running ping. And it works just fine, no problem at all. Now, the reason for this is that Linux now exposes a setting specifically related to ICMP echo. And it says you can say who is allowed to send these without any privileges, without any capabilities, and without being the real root user on the host. Um, it's this syscuttle here. And when we run it, we can see it's a full range. So basically any group can do this. On this host, anyone can send uh, um, ICMP echo messages. So we no longer need NetRaw. So in all likelihood, you can drop NetRaw off every container if the only reason you had it was because of ping. So that's one, definitely option for hardening. So there's another one, which is around another common reason for people to need capabilities is to bind ports lower than 1024. These were traditionally considered privileged ports in Linux and Unix. 
So they were, they were reserved for root as being the only person who could bind them, like start service listing on those ports. Ports like 80 and 443, obviously, very commonly used in applications. So we obviously might need to bind them. Now, if I try to do this on my host machine, and I try and run this command here, which will essentially just uh, bind a web server to port 80, it will say, no, you're not root, and you don't have netbind service as a capability, therefore I'm not going to let you do this. However, if we start a container up, and then we try the same command inside of our container, it works just fine. And the reason is that, again, there is a system control setting in Linux that allows you to change where the privileged port range is and to essentially expand the unprivileged port range that anyone can bind. And what Docker have done as a default is they have said, well, in containers, this really doesn't make a lot of sense. There's no concept really of privileged ports uh, as an idea. So what they've done is they've said the unprivileged port range starts at zero. So this meaning anyone can essentially bind ports to any port uh, inside the container and inside the container's network namespace. So this means that if you needed that capability just for binding ports, you can probably drop the capability altogether. And we can actually see that the setting is actually different on our host. And this is the kind of traditional setting on the host, which is why I wasn't able to bind that port there. So there is essentially, hopefully, two or three different ways in which you might be able to harden your containers by removing and dropping capabilities that are no longer needed. If you're looking for more information about this, as ever, please do check out our Security Lab site. And in the next video, what I'll be doing is taking a look at C groups, which are used to help control resources that are available to Linux processes and containers. Look forward to seeing you then.